decided to go screen free, which means no television, no Netflix, no Facebook, no anything, no YouTube. And let me tell you, the first day I was bored out of my gorge. I think I may have an addiction. So in my boredom, I decided to paint my teeth tiny master bathroom. It needs to be renovated. It is on our list of things to do, but because it's ugly and because it's old and it's original 1979 and it's small, I don't care for it the way I probably should. I leave it messy, I don't clean it as often as I should, and I do not love this space. So I thought I would give it a free makeover using some paint that I already had and just freshen it up. Of course, I got a little carried away, but with a budget of just $60, I cannot wait to show you how it turned out. So here is my disclaimer. Do not try this at home. As you can see, I painted the tile. Now I've painted tile before in bathrooms and it held up great, but I've never painted inside an actual shower. I do not recommend doing this, but this shower had already been painted before we even bought the house. The previous homeowner totally tricked us. They painted it and we bought, we didn't realize till it started peeling off a couple of years later. So we are using the same paint that they had left over and just repainting inside the shower and all of the other tile. Again, I do not recommend doing this. So I went ahead and primed and painted the tile outside of the shower as well. And then I used leftover paint from the craft room to paint the top of the bathroom. Again, just using paint I already had. I also painted the mirror and the vanity with leftover black paint that I had and I found some leftover handles and it gave the entire vanity a quick update for free. It cost me nothing. The biggest issue I have with this bathroom is storage because it's a shoebox. There are master closets bigger than this freaking bathroom. And we had a little, I don't know what you'd call it, medicine cabinet above the toilet, but it was so narrow that it basically was useless. And I'm too, I'm so lazy. I'm a lazy, I'm a ladybug. So I love just shoving and hiding things out of the way, but because I only had the cabinet underneath the sink to put stuff, it was just, it was so jumbled that I left a lot of stuff on the counter. So a really good solution for either a visual bug or a lazy ladybug like me is floating shelves. So instead of a medicine cabinet, I installed really inexpensive $10 each floating shelves from Home Depot to add some extra storage. And then I shopped the dollar store. I found this great white basket that you guys know I love, some jars for smaller things, and I found photo boxes for just a dollar each. I love stacking photo boxes. I added some quick labels from my book. That's a shameless plug. If you've already purchased my book, you know that you have access to everything in it as a free printable, and all of the labels are edible. Not like eating, like you can editable, edit. you can edit them. And I just print them off on sticker paper, just regular Avery sticker paper, cut them off and attach them to the boxes and the jars to have custom organization on a shoestring budget. Storing all my makeup in a tray in this basket means it's still like out of sight for my ladybug brain, but it's a simple and easy organizing solution that takes literally a second to put away, so I'm actually putting it away. I also installed a dollar store hook, especially for my towel, so I could use the hooks on the back of the door for pajamas, and my bathroom is suddenly so much more functional. My favorite part, though, is the shower curtain. I picked up this shower curtain for $20, $20 from HomeSense. I cut it in half and use the extra piece to make this great Roman blind. This is like a DIY decor dream come true. You can take any old mini blind and turn it into a beautiful Roman shade in like 10 minutes for free, basically. Turning an old mini blind into a Roman shade is so simple, so easy, and all you need is fabric, an old mini blind, and some hot glue. I thought about making a whole tutorial of how to do this, but the truth is there's about a bazillion better ones on YouTube, way better than I could ever do. But instead of sewing, I just used hot glue. So as you're watching these other tutorials, and I'm gonna put some links down below, know that I just did it the lazy way. I applied some hot glue to the front of each of the six blinds that I kept and 
folded over and hot glued and hot glued it. It's just all hot, there's no sewing. But the blind actually works. It goes up and down. It's really a perfect Roman shade and it cost me absolutely nothing to make. So in just two days, my bathroom went from disgusting and dated to much, much better. It's freshened up. I love the shower curtain. And it's way more functional because of the open storage for all of my stuff. I'm actually keeping up with it. I'm actually putting things away. And because it looks a little prettier, I'm caring for this bathroom more. I like it a little bit more. It isn't great. It isn't my dream bathroom. But instead of spending two days crushing Netflix, I gave my home a hug. I spent very little money, under $60 total, to give it a little bit of an update and just fall in love with my home a little bit more. I think it's so important to do these small gestures to our house so we can bloom where we're planted, so we can appreciate what we have instead of daydreaming about getting more or bigger or instead of every time I walk in that bathroom wishing it looked like something else, using what I have, getting creative, having a little fun and making it even a little bit better Honestly, I'm much, much happier every time I go in there. So that is my tip today. No matter what it is, give your home a hug. Maybe it's buying a new shower curtain or throw pillows, or maybe it's just scrubbing your kitchen, <laughs> whatever it is. It just makes us a little happier and a little more grateful for what we have. So what are you waiting for? Give your home a hug today. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have it stayed to the end. I'm doing a rant today, but instead of like a funny story rant, I wanted to have like a real discussion with you guys. So stop watching now if you don't want to get real for a second. If you guys follow my Facebook, you probably know that recently I did this little live ranty roo on, on my Facebook page because I was annoyed. I got an email from a company who makes hoop, hook and loop adhesive. I can't say, we're gonna call it the V word. It's not vagina. There's a brand out there who makes a product that attaches things using the hook and loop fastener thing. They don't want anyone to say the V word. They don't want anyone to call this thing that we all call this thing by this name, unless it is the brand name of that or we use the full brand name. So they wanted me to say, I guess I could say it if I use it. They wanted me to say that I love using Velcro brand adhesive fastener and not just the V word, right? And I got mad. The video they were talking about was four years old and it wasn't a sponsored video. I wasn't being paid to talk about it. I was just sharing my ideas. And so I felt like a little offended, I guess, and I didn't want to change it. And I didn't want to start like they suggested in the future, always calling it hook and loop fasteners instead of calling it the V word. And I was like, isn't this censorship? I mean, a little bit. And I've, it's, they're not the first company to contact me and ask me to not say Tupperware. I'm supposed to say food storage containers. Point is, there's lots of words that we use that are name brand, like Band-Aid instead of bandages, or Kleenex instead of facial tissue, and Q-tip instead of cotton swab. We all just do it. We say it and we don't give a second thought to it. So suddenly being told that I had to give a second thought to it in just a regular like me talking felt like, wait, is, isn't this a freedom of speech thing? <laughs> is it though? And my husband, I was really mad at first. So my husband explained it to me that you're not allowed to trademark something that's a common word. So as soon as their trademark for the V word starts being used as a noun or you know, a generic word, then other companies can challenge them and stop paying the licensing fee to use it, right? It can just be like, sorry, that's an everyday word, which means that V word brand can no longer really make money, right? So I mean, so I'm seeing their side. I am seeing their side, but I'm also seeing my side. I watched a video that they put out. It's hilarious. I'm going to put a, li a link to it below with a bunch of lawyers singing about why you can't say the V word anymore. You can't call it the V word unless you're talking about the brand and you have to use the whole big brand name. And it was cute and it was funny. And, and I was like, oh, you know, until I got an email <laughs> and the email, while they didn't come out and say, we're going to sue you, 
it uh, asked me to change the video, asked me to change the name, asked me to refer it to Hook and Loop in the future. So I took that as like a subtle, like a subtle threat, <laughs> you know what I mean? I kind of blew it out of proportion. I took it as a threat. I took it as like, I better, I better not say the V word anymore or I might be sued. And even when I watched the video the second time, I thought that with a bunch of lawyers singing about how you can't say the V word anymore, I saw that then as like maybe a little bit of a subtle threat against using the V word. So I see both sides. And so my question is, I know this is a crazy rant, but is it censorship or is it trademark protection? It's both, isn't it? It really is both. But as a content creator, I'm making videos. Sometimes I'll just post something on Facebook and you, maybe you just want to, you bought your son a new pair of V word shoes, you know, when you post a picture of it, but they're not, they're Nike. They're not V brand hook and loop shoes. Um, maybe you'll get an email as well. And so, yeah, where's the line, right? I thought it was like black and white, freedom of speech. You know, you can say whatever you want, but I also see their side where they have to protect their name so that their trademark isn't taken away. So I want to weigh in on it, people. Let's, let's have an open discussion about it. And um, if you want, nothing, don't be negative there. I'm sensing, I'm sensing, I'm censoring your thoughts by don't be negative. And I'm like, I'm all like, don't censor people. I'm on my soapbox, right? Freedom of speech, don't censor people. But then I have this Facebook page where I'm censoring out bullies. So I don't allow people to be mean to other people, which is censoring. I'm, I'm censoring people as well. I'm saying you can only <laughs> say positive things. I'm the pot calling the kettle black, aren't I? I do the exact same thing. I say censoring is terrible. Freedom of speech, we have to protect this. And then I say, you're not allowed to tell that lady she's ugly, that's mean, and I block that person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I can't have it both ways. And so I thought we'd have a discussion about it because it isn't black and white, it's super gray. And I think just talking about it and not being afraid to offend or hurt people's feelings and just and just talking about it is a good thing. So this is me on my soapbox talking about it. The V word. <laughs>